What's up, future respiratory therapist? In this video, I'm gonna show you the one question to ask yourself to answer the question, what's the difference between AC and SIMV? Let's dive in. Alrighty, AC versus SIMV. Before we jump into that, respiratorycoach.com. Check out the Respiratory Coach Academy. The TMC and the CSE boot camps are right there waiting to aid and assist you in passing those credentialing exams on the first attempt. If you would check that out, I'd greatly appreciate it. Let's talk about this, AC versus SIMV. Now what we have here is a picture of a patient receiving mechanical ventilation and you're asking the question, What's the difference between AC and SIMV? I'm glad you're watching this video because here in a short few minutes, you're gonna know exactly the difference. Here we go. Assist control, that is what AC stands for, okay? So when we talk about assist control, the first thing you have to realize is that this setting or this mode is going to tell the ventilator what to do when the patient initiates a breath, okay? That's what you have to realize, that when you're talking about AC, you know what, let me say this real quick. Also, we understand that these terms are somewhat uh, not mainstream anymore. What we know is, is that words like CMV breath sequences and IMV breath sequences and CSV breath sequences are the actual technical uh, uh, chat burn taxonomy that we uh, are, are is coming about is, is the is the is the new norm. But I'm doing it. I'm using AC and SIMV because that's what the students are still learning and what they're still seeing and 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 being talked to about at the bedside. So uh, I just want to make that clarification here real quick. So I'm going to use the word assist control now. What this tells the ventilator is, is that, look, you have a job to do, and your job is to deliver this breath this many times a minute, and you set all the parameters on the, vent, the, the, the mechanical ventilator. We talked about settings last week. You're gonna set all those settings. But you see, now the ventilator has to know what to do when a patient uh, uh, effort is detected. So when the patient tries to initiate a breath, remember sensitivity? We said the purpose of sensitivity is to allow for the ventilator to detect a patient effort. It's very important to have that sensitivity set correctly because what that's gonna do is that's gonna trigger the ventilator to allow that patient to do something or to not allow the patient to do something and the vent to do something instead. So when you're in assist control, and the patient initiates a breath, understand that that's where it stops for the patient. The patient initiates the breath and the ventilator says, oh, okay, you want a breath? Cool, but I'm going to give it to you and I'm also going to control what this breath looks like. In other words, you can initiate a breath, but you're going to get a mandatory breath based off of the settings that the clinician has put into the ventilator. So that's the key difference. And when you're looking at waveforms, I don't wanna to get too far into waveforms, but it's hard to teach this without waveforms because waveforms makes it clear as day. When we look at this, we can see that this patient is set on a tidal volume of 500. I know it's kind of blurry for you at home, but just trust me here, okay? Hopefully you can still see the shapes. And what I mean by this is, is look at all of these breaths. This is flow, 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 flow. These are all breaths. The question is, is don't they all look the same? Now the pressure might vary slightly because that's gonna vary. But when we talk about flow, and we talk about volume, look at how they all look identical. You know why they all look identical? Because the vent is in control of every single breath. So the patient requested this breath, this breath, this breath, this breath, this breath. All these breaths were patient initiated. But the ventilator said, I'm in control here. So you're gonna get what is set. We set tidal volume, that's why they're all the same all the way across. 
and we set flow, which is why flow is the same all the way across. Because the vent is in control of these breaths that are being initiated by the patient. Hopefully that makes sense. Think about the name. The vent says, oh, you want assistance? You want a breath? Okay, I got you, but I'm in control. Okay, now watch what happens when we look at SIMV, which stands for Synchronized Intermittent Mandatory Ventilation. Now, look at this image. It looks different, right? When we look at this, what we find is, is that we've got a volume here and a volume here and a volume here. What's going on with this volume, this volume, this volume? Why are these different than these? Look at the flow pattern. This, this, this all look the same, but they look different than these three, these three, and these three. Oh, and that also just coincides with these three tidal volumes down here. That's interesting, huh? So this breath, these three breaths are identical, but the rest of them are different. And the reason that is, is because this is a mandatory breath, this is a mandatory breath, this is a mandatory breath. The rest of these are patient breaths. The patient said, I wanna take a breath. And the ventilator said, cool. And because we're in SIMV, you can take that breath however you want to. It can be however big, however small, however slow, however fast you want it to be. You can do that because that's what SIMV is. When the patient takes a breath in between mandatory breaths, so in here, the patient is in full control of that breath, which makes it a true spontaneous breath. And that's what we're talking about. The word spontaneous is super, super important here because spontaneous breathing allowed in between mandatory breaths creates for us what we know as S-I-M-V. And that's the difference. So that's all you have to ask yourself when you're at the bedside or when you're taking an exam or when somebody's talking to you about mechanical ventilation and they say, hey, your patient's on assist control. Say, okay, what does that mean? What does that mean? Oh, that means that when this patient initiates a breath, the ventilator is going to deliver a mandatory breath based off of whatever is set. What if this patient was in SIMV? Then you would say, oh, I got it. That explains why there are these smaller breaths or these larger breaths or all over the place maybe, but that explains why all of these breaths are different because in between the mandatory breaths, when the patient asks for a breath, the ventilator says, do you, take what you want. Enjoy your spontaneous breathing. That's the difference between assist control and SIMV. The question you have to ask is, what happens when the patient initiates a breath? If it's followed by a mandatory breath, it's assist control. If it's followed by a true spontaneous breath, then you're in SIMV. Two basic modes of mechanical ventilation. We're not talking super advanced modes, we're just talking the difference between assist control and SIMV as you're learning it maybe right now. So that's AC. That's SIMV. I hope it helps. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'm Respiratory Coach. If you haven't already done so, please hit the subscribe button. Come follow me on all the socials and don't forget about the TMC and the CSC boot camps right there at respiratorycoach.com. Oh, and also, if you haven't checked out The Shift, the very first ever respiratory care reality show, you can see it right here on the Respiratory Coach YouTube channel. Here's episode one. Check it out. And remember, average is easy. Don't be it.